Hey kids, what's up? I have news. I now love playing against the Vienna. I know, it sounds crazy, but um, I've had, well, my, th my last three over the board games, I've had the black pieces against the Vienna, and I lost twice, horribly, and then got a good win. Um, but I now know what to do. And I'm, I'm getting quite comfortable with this as well, actually. So um, let me take you through, first of all, a game. I played this late last night on my phone. It's a five-minute blitz. Uh, no, it's a 5-5, five -five, I think, actually. 5-5, five -five, my opponent's rated 14-26, and I'm only 13-16 in blitz. Okay. Um, but I wipe the floor with J-Dubs 9802. Um, and he doesn't really seem to do much wrong, but wait, just wait for the uh, for the accuracy score on this, because I can believe it. Okay, we have the Vienna game. This is the Vienna game. White plays e4, black plays e5, and then white plays the knight out to c3, instead of the more usual knight to f3. The difference with knight to f3 is you're attacking this pawn. With knight c3, you're not. You're defending the king's pawn. But the knight can very often have ideas about coming out to d5 and attacking c7, attacking the queen should she ever come to one of these squares, okay? And I'm now going mainline. Look at me, playing all grown up. No fantastic freaky Freddy moves here, okay? Knight to f6 inviting the Vienna Gambit. And the Vienna Gambit is pawn to f4. And it's very inadvisable indeed for black to take this pawn because then you get the typical Freddy Krueger move. King's pawn advances with tempo, hitting the knight and actually forcing it back home. The only alternative move is queen to e7, trying to pin, but that is actually less accurate because after queen to e2 from white, the knight has to go back home anyway. So, the Vienna Gambit. And we don't take the pawn, no. All right? The best move is pawn to d5. Now, there are obviously multiple things that white can do in this situation. Um, but this is the accurate move. F takes e5. And then we re respond with knight takes e4. Now we have some horse tension going on here. And we've got two awkward pawns in the middle of the board. Um, and any anything could happen. Now, they could, for example, take here. Um, but then you just end up with a, quite a dissolved situation and uh, a little bit on the boring side. Also, you know, this lack of f pawn is, is a bit worrying for... Um, in fact, you can't... Yeah, we can't do that straight away. I was thinking if knight takes, we'll probably recapture and then queen h4 check. Remember that move, queen h4 check. We also have to be conscious any time we move our f pawn um, about queen h5 check from white, of course. Now, the most fashionable move these days is the Paulson attack with queen to f3. Okay, in fact, let me, while we are here, I'm going to pull up the Lee Chess Explorer. And we are going to, we'll see it from the white perspective, and we'll go uh, the <clears throat> full range of everything apart from hyperbolic, because that's just silly. Okay, the Vienna game from white's perspective. We respond with this Vienna gambit, declined with the best move, pawn to d5. Pawn to d6 is weaker, pawn to d5 is best. Okay, and here on the. Um, yeah, we have fe5, that is correct. Knight takes e4 practically always, 97.5% of the time. So only 1 in 400 games will anyone do anything. 1 in 40 games, someone will do anything else. Okay, and here, here look. So we have knight f3 with 32%. We have knight takes knight at 13%. But the most popular move at 38% is queen to f3, the Paulson attack. All right, now back to the game. We have the Paulson attack on the board. And the Paulson attack is okay. Um, I lost a couple of games to a mate from India earlier on uh, who played this against me. Was that 
Is that Chestnut pr- uh, C9 Prince? I can't remember. Sorry, mate, I can't remember your name, but uh, your username. But anyway, yeah, he beat, he beat me a couple of times with this opening. And, you know, quite typically you'll, you'll capture the knight here and do this. And I faced this a bunch of times. I have faced this loads of times. In fact, while we are here, while we're here, let's have a quick look at the chess.com explorer, right? Just for giggles. Okay, my games as white. La, Dida, Vienna Gambit. <coughs> Declined properly with pawn to d5. We take, they take, okay? Queen f3, I have played 63 times with a 49-49 win rate, okay? So, yeah, it's okay. And the most common move by country mile is knight takes c3, okay? After which I'll probably capture the b-pawn, yeah. And I win 58% of the time from there. Back to the game. Now, here, I'm not doing this move anymore, right? We are doing, let's go to here, right? After, so knight c3 is the most popular according to Lee Chess, right? 60% of the time. But then you have second, knight to c6, 17%. That's one in seven. Isn't it? One in seven games. Okay. So they will see this less often and look at the difference. Knight takes c3, white wins 54%. Black only 41. Knight to c6, white wins 42. Black wins 52. And the other move is the bizarre looking pawn to f5. Not even looked into that one, which could be a bit interesting. But anyway, we are going with flipping orientation all the time. I do apologize, hope you can keep up. With knight to c6, this is what we played in the game. And it turns out, boys and girls, that um, this is extremely precarious for the player with the white pieces. If they are not very careful and very accurate with what they do in the next few moves, they can find themselves playing the part of a mop and having the floor wiped with their hair. So, let us dive in. So opponent now thinks for eight and a half seconds and takes the knight. Hmm. Okay. Now, <clears throat> here, uh, there seems to be a free pawn. But I play, in fact, what I think is the, actually the, the most accurate move here, which is knight to d4. Okay, now, we've said very often in the Vienna, these knights can come out this way or if you have got the other pieces, all right, they come out this way, okay? And what I'm doing, again, you see I'm hitting this queen here, as we saw, we talked about the queen can quite often come to f6 from the other way around, but I'm also hitting the c-pawn, and the c-pawn comes, as every fool know, with a fork on king and rook. So queenie has a problem. Queen is under attack, so the queen needs to move. And this pawn is also under attack, so there are only four real moves, okay? Of which one of them, bam, 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 is very bad indeed, so we're not gonna play that one because knight takes queen, okay? So queen back to d1 can be played, queen to d3 or queen to c3, right? If you were the white player, which would you choose? Well, in the game, we have queen to d3, and this, I believe, is a blunder because of this next move. Knight takes e4. Now, material is equal, but this is a, a discovered defense on the knight, okay? And look at this. We are hitting the queen, okay? So what's the queen going to do? Queen takes here? Could be. In the game, they now play queen to c3, which is actually the best square, and that's where the queen should have gone in the first place. And now I push pawn to a5. And the reason for that is I'm lining up bishop b4, putting extra pressure, and also preparing to castle. Right, it's a, it's a clunky looking move. Um, they now push a3 to defend, and now c5. Just defending my knight again. Um, yeah, because the reason for that is I want to bring my queen out. I want to come out and attack this king, okay? And but my queen is the only defender of the knight right now, so I play pawn to c5 to defend the knight. And I realize that my position is looking kind of funky with pawns 
all over the shop, but I have a very nice knight in the middle of the board. I have much better king safety right now, and my job really is to prevent white from castling. Okay, so out comes their knight to e2, and now queen to h4 with check. Knight blocks. Bishop out to g4. Um, trying to remember the, the reasoning behind this because, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a developing move. Oh, yeah, no, the simple point of that is just to prevent the king from castling. So we cover d1. There ain't no long castles now, right? Which also already slightly weakened by the uh, move pawn a2 to a3. They now bring out their bishop. So are they now preparing to castle short? Which would be a very good idea. I mean, you love to castle short when you're a Vienna Gambit player. Now I push bishop to e7. So can they actually castle here? I think they can. They've actually got good control over this square. I mean, I'd love to get my knight into there. So yeah, they castle, I castle. Okay, so he's he's got away with castling. Now he grabs a pawn on e4. And I'm thinking I would love to get my knight into here. Absolutely, but I can't. Why can't I get my knight into there with a royal fork? Well, it's this guy, isn't it? This bishop here, okay? This bishop is guarding that square. So what can we do? What can we do about that bishop? Bishop to e6. And then white's thinking a little bit too two-dimensionally. Okay, well, I get that bishop, I isolate his pawn, blah, blah, blah. I don't even bother to recapture it. Knight to e2, check. With a fork on king and queen. I grab the queen. He grabs the pawn. So this is one of those situations where you, you really have to think it through. And he thinks for 18 seconds here. Okay, so he, he's got a knight that he can capture three ways. He's also got a knight that is under attack twice and is undefended. He's got a bishop that can take a pawn, but also a pawn that can take a bishop. <clears throat> so, what, what should he do? I mean, if he takes the knight, I either get the bishop or the piece back. If he takes the pawn, it comes with checks. That's forcing, so I have to recapture, okay? And then he gets a knight. So this is like a desperado. So he wins a pawn, loses a minor piece, gains a minor piece. And he has to recapture with a knight, not a pawn, because otherwise his own knight would hang. Okay, so he takes, I take. And now he plays a blunder. Right, the correct move, I think, is this. Right, he's he is seven materials down already. Oh, actually, it's not. Of course it isn't. Okay, but it's the same problem either way. Yeah, if knight takes knight, we've got rook takes rook, it's checkmate, back rank mate, because the king's hiding in the corner. But he does this, and it's no better. It's queen to e1, and the only legal move now is rook back to f1, queen takes rook, checkmate, in the corner. All right, are you ready? Hold on to your wobbly bits. Let's look at the game report. Oh, this is better. <laughs> when I played this on my phone last night, it said that my opponent's accuracy was five point something. And I thought, that is just rude. That's not even right. Okay, so I've got 66.7 with three missed wins. So let's go through this quickly, and then I'm going to tell, take you through the anti Paulson theory. Okay? So, there. And this is a book move, last book move. And now, actually, black is slightly better according to the machine. And that's inaccurate. Bishop b5 is best, and we will look at that. Now, knight d4 is best, okay? You don't take the pawn. You come here hitting the queen and the c-pawn. This is a mistake. Queen c3 was better because of that. That is a great move. Now queen c3 is another mistake. Apparently you should have gone to here. Wow. This leads to losing a queen. Okay, so there's a miss coming up. Bishop b4, what? Bishop b4, right, we need to remember this one. We need to remember this one, okay. 
Bishop b4, hitting the queen. And where can the queen go? Not there, not there. Can't stay there, can't stay there. Can't go there because of pawn. And why can't the queen take the bishop? Because of knight takes c2, family, fork. Okay, interesting stuff. So bishop to here. Now what's the best move then? It's saying queen takes d4 is the best move for black. But why not something else? Let's look at queen c4. That's the second best move. Okay. Then we... Oh, what? Bishop e6 hit her again? No way! And now, like, queen back to e2. And we play... Oh, no, no, I can't do that. I'm just thinking, how can white save this queen? This is great stuff. And boys and girls, if you don't analyse your games, you're going to miss off this great stuff. Okay, knight to e2. It's, it's, it's saying the queen can't be saved. Hang on. But what about something like this? Then we just take on c2. And it's saying it's just winning, winning, winning. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Wow. Anyway, back to the fun. <clears throat> so we take there. Queen goes there. Should have brought out the bishop. Noting this royal fork. That's a great idea. Okay, but I do this. Okay, that's also a miss. Should have played the knight out. Okay. That's not great. Again, bishop. Again, bishop e4 here. But then if pawn takes, pawn takes attacks both the queen and the rook. Oh, my goodness. This is a great line. I'm loving this, man. Yeah. Actually, a takes is the best. A takes is best. And then what you're going to do? Then you have to take the knight, give up the queen... Win a rook back. Wow. Funkadelic, man. Then I would cut, yeah, castles. And actually, black is only slightly better here. Because um, white has a rook and two minor pieces for the queen. But considering king safety, yeah, you've got to give black a slight edge. Anyway, back to the fun. So, that was wrong, wrong-ish. That was good move. This is... Not so great. And that's a miss. Should have pushed g3 immediately. That's a miss. B5. B5. I guess it's the same idea. Here. Trying to put a pawn here. Pawn can't take because we hit both pieces. Hang on. Hurt the, but then they take this rook with check. So that doesn't work. And then the queen escapes. Hmm. Okay, and we're only slightly better here, but it felt very different to that. And that, of course, is... Uh, that is a blunder. <coughs> Should have pushed a4. Because of b5. Again, really saying b5. Huh. And that's another miss. Miss... Okay, but... Yeah, it's a miss, but... Okay, so b5, but b5, yeah, I guess bishop there, but I can't take, I could have just taken it with the knight, yeah. So if b5 here, bishop comes back to one of these, it can't go there. So if b5, bishop, d3, yeah? So let's just look at this, because I'm fascinated. Has to be... Oh, right. So what if bishop d3 here? Then we push b4. Oh, my lord. When pawns get angry. Woo! Okay, anyway. So, the guy got absolutely smashed. That's the long and short of it. So, I have made, for your delectation and delight, a, um, a study on this. Got six short chapters. That's all there is. And we'll go through all the most common lines. Okay, so here we go. Vienna Gambit decline with d5. Takes, takes. The Paulson attack. Okay, this is our starting point. And we always play knight to c6. Okay, now, if you look here, everything is worse 
for black, apart from the move bishop b5. Bishop b5 is also the most common move. And again, we're looking at the full spread, right? the full monte here. Bishop b5, but black still wins 48 to 45% of the time. Bishop b5, best move. Okay, Now, we take the knight. Okay, They can take with the d pawn. They can also take with the b pawn, which is one to look into. Okay, And when this happens, we fly out with a queen. I'm already liking this. Okay, I like the wayward queen. Okay, queen g4 check. They block with a pawn. Black is slightly better. And we come here and we trade queens, right? And the engine says it's equal from here. But if you look at the totals, okay, there is no line in which white does better. No line from here. Okay, the best move is bishop takes c6, b takes c6, right? And then we're going to end up casting short. But everything else, black is significantly better. And overall, black wins 49% to 39. So takes, takes, bishop out here. Black is slightly better, but we are going to be able to castle. Okay, We could play, for example, bishop out to here and prevent them from long castles. And short castles is just not going to happen. So something like this. Or get you know get the bishop out, short castle, and white has an isolated pawn here. Yeah, our pawns aren't fantastic because we've got these double pawn islands, but um, we should do absolutely fine. And in fact, the the best move according to the machine, <clears throat> no, the best move by test here is pawn to h5. Go figure. I mean, maybe we don't need to castle at all. I don't know, but should be a lot of fun. All right, let's look at the second line. All right, so where are we up to? Okay, this is kind of our, hello. Right, looks like this is our starting point. Interesting, it has, okay, we have a starting point. Knight takes e4, okay, knight takes e4. This is our starting point. Knight takes e4, okay. Then we come in to d4. It's odd because it's missed off the first moves in this one for some reason. Okay, and queen d3. This is the this is um, what we saw in the game. We take the pawn. Okay, and now the best move is let's say they go to c3 like before. Then we know what to do. Then we know it's bishop b4. Okay, and the best move actually now is for the queen to sacrifice herself. So very likely. To be played here. Um, <clears throat> so from here, after we take the knight, so queen, actually, queen takes e4. Queen takes e4 is quite commonly played as well. So what happens in that instance? Let's have, let's have a look. <coughs> bishop f5. Queen defends the knight, knight defends the bishop. And now the bishop and the knight are all looking at c2. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to cough myself to death in excitement. That is cool. All right, let's look at another one. Okay, this move. All right, queen c3. This is the best move. Okay, however, we take anyway, of course, because we have to get our knight back. Queen defends this now. And look at this, 66% win rate for black. 66! Right, they play knight to e2 is the most common move. And we can simply now drop our knight back here. And we are winning 72% of the time. No need to trade off, okay? Just drop your knight back. C5 is played quite a lot here, okay? With a 58% win rate for black. But also, just knight back to C6, and we are winning 72% of the time, okay? Not a lot to remember there. All right, now what about d4? What if they push d4? Okay, well, we can just capture, right? And we are just simply better. d4 is a blunder. Goes from dead even to negative 4.3. We take the pawn, we're attacking the c-pawn. Look at these knights, right? The two horsemen of the apocalypse. All right, now, d3. Also a blunder. Goes from 0, 0 to negative 4.5. Again, we just throw a knight in here, right? How simple is this? You know, 
This is not Grandmaster level stuff. Anyone can remember this. Right, now, there's also the another blunder. Knight g to e2. Looks very sensible. I'm defending my knight, blah, 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 blah. Well, knight takes e5, hits the queen. Okay, most common move, queen to here, and bang. This is just sexy, okay? Most common move here, obviously, is going to be knight takes e4. No way. Knight d3 check. Okay, fork on king and queen. Is, I think we might have found, you know, like, along with the Stafford Gambit, this is right up there in terms of sex, sex appeal. This is fantastic. C takes. <gasps> no! Knight takes. Oh! It's a discovery on the queen. Hell's teeth. Right? We have just looked, guys, at the six most common lines. And I would say four or five of them are dripping with sex appeal. What? What a response to the very fashionable Paulson attack. <sighs> I need a cold shower after all of that excitement and need to scrub myself down. Um, but yeah, Vienna, bring it. I can't wait. So I think I've got an over-the-board game tomorrow night. Hopefully I've got the black pieces and hopefully I get to roll out some of this. But I'm going to practice this a little bit. I'm going to train myself a little bit. I'll put the link to the study in the description as well. So knock yourself out. See you later.